going to flip its magnetic field soon and, uh, and start a, a major milestone in its uh, 11-year space weather cycle. And uh, with us today to talk about that is Dr. Uh, Holly Gilbert um, with NASA's Goddard Space uh, uh, Flight Center in uh, Maryland. Uh, Dr. Gilbert, uh, uh, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us about this, uh, this magnetic flip that the sun is just about to do now. It sounds like a, a pretty big deal for its weather cycle. It is. Uh, the sun is this incredibly dynamic, complicated ball of magnetic fields. And these magnetic fields are what drive solar activity, but we can also think of the sun as one large magnet where there's a well-defined north pole and a south pole. And right now what's happening is the sun is going through this strange transition where all the magnetic fields get very, very complicated and they reorganize so that in fact the north pole becomes the south pole and the south pole is becoming the north pole. And that sounds like the, like something that, that I've heard about that happens on Earth, too. Is it just common only to the sun, or is that something that other planets can have that have magnetic fields? No, you're correct. It actually happens on the Earth, too, but on a much longer time scale. On the sun, this happens on average about every 11 years. So that's quite rapid relative to where, when it happens on the Earth, which is um, 50,000 years to 100,000 years. So it's a, it's a similar process, but it takes much longer here on Earth. And in terms of the sun's weather cycle, I guess what does it mean when, when, when you flip your magnetic field? Is it uh, all calamity and, and solar flares that we should be worried about, or is it just kind of like a mile marker in how the, sun's how the sun behaves? It's really just a mile marker. This happens, again, almost every 11 years on average, and it's nothing significant except that it, it marks an increased um, period of solar activity. And so what's happening is the sun is going through this complicated stage, and we're in a period right now where uh, its activity is at a maximum level. So we're seeing more sunspots, more solar flares, more solar storms. So in that respect, it's very interesting, and we should be concerned for our technology because these solar storms can affect us here on Earth, and um, not us directly, but our technology and our satellites. So that's why it's important to pay attention to what's going on on the sun and pay attention to these magnetic fields. Now, what will you be, as a scientist, looking for in, uh, in the imagery from the spacecraft and, and even solar telescopes that are watching the sun during this, uh, this period? For me specifically, I study these large eruptions from the sun called coronal mass ejections and the, how, they, how the dynamic activity affects us here on Earth. But what's really going on on the sun is what I study in my area of expertise. Great. Now, um, you mentioned that, uh, you know, that this is kind of a, a really active time uh, for the sun. I, I know that there's been some studies that this current, you know, active phase is, you know, kind of paltry compared to really active phases in the past. And I was wondering if you could put that in, into sort of perspective for us. This, this particular solar maximum has been relatively weak compared to other solar maximums in the past. Um, we still don't fully understand how the sun works and why it, it activates and why it flips its poles like this. So we're really trying to understand the inner workings of the sun, how it relates to solar activity. But yes, this particular solar maximum that we're in right now is actually relatively weak, meaning there aren't as many storms, there aren't as many sunspots as there have been in the past solar maximums. Is there a specific date that you can pin down as to when this flip is going to happen, or, or is it a, a slow, gradual process? It's a very slow, gradual process, but the North Pole has already flipped, and in fact did so almost, I think, over a year ago. Oh. We're still waiting for the South Pole to completely flip. We expect that to happen in the next couple of months, but we won't know until it actually happens, and that will mark the, the peak of solar maximum. We'll know then that we are at the peak of this particular solar maximum period. Does that mean that the sun has two south poles right now? <laughs> sort of, in a weird, strange way. It, it's what we call a, a we call positive and, and negative polarity. So it's on average, it has all of, of more one polarity than the other in a way. It's a strange phenomena. Great. How do you track uh, the poles of the sun in this flipping process? Is it a uh, um, something you can see in the, the imagery that you get from the spacecraft? We can. We take um, what we call magnetograms, and that allows us to see the magnetic fields on the surface of the sun and allows us to see which polarity they are, if they're positive or they're negative. And so that's how we determine um, how, this is, how this is happening. It's very complicated, though, and so you get a lot of um, in complicated areas where it's a mixture of positive and negative. But we can basically see it in the data that we take. 
Well, it, it sounds as if, you know, aside from the, uh, the more active uh, phases that, we, that folks on Earth don't really have to worry about calamity or, or super flares or disaster from this flip. I mean, is that, is that correct? You know, I guess how, how, would, how would you calm folks down who might get a little bit alarmed when they hear you, the sun's going to flip its lid? You are correct. It, it really doesn't mean anything disastrous here on Earth for us. Um, it really is just the way things happen. The sun has been doing this ever since it's uh, been born. So it's nothing for us to really worry about. But what we are concerned about is when these solar storms interact with the Earth's magnetic field and affect our technology because it can cause power grids to go out. It can cause problems with electronics on satellites. That's what we're concerned about. But in terms of our everyday lives, um, we're protected here on the surface of the Earth by the atmosphere on the Earth and the, and the Earth's magnetic field. So we are really not to worry in terms of our everyday lives, but if a, a large storm hits the Earth and causes the electric grid to go down, then we are kind of affected indirectly. So um, it's important to study for sure, but there's no reason to be alarmed. You know, it, it seems just as a, a weird thing for the sun to do, to, to flip its magnetic field. And I'm wondering if, if you think this is one of the strangest behaviors of the sun, or if there are other, uh, other things that, that really take the cake in terms of strange solar behavior. It is really strange. I, I agree. I th it might be the, the strangest thing. Um, that, along with the fact that it has this 11-year cycle, is very strange. And we don't understand why that is. Why is it every 11 years on average? Some of these uh, cycles last longer, some are shorter. And by understanding what's going on inside the sun, that will help us learn more about why this is occurring. So the fact that it occurs is very strange, and, and, and I do think it's one of the mysteries in solar physics. Great. Well, uh, Dr. Gilbert, I think I'm just about out of time. Um, is, is there anything else about the, the flip that we may not have touched on that, uh, that you'd like to point out? Um, I don't think so, but if you want to learn more about that and other things about the sun, you can go to our website at nasa.gov slash sunearth. Well, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Gilbert, for, for having time for us today. And uh, we'll be watching the sun and look forward to your updates. Great. Thanks so much.